Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some mono black zombies. So this is going to be our first time, I believe, to play this deck since War of the Spark came out. We haven't changed too much about the deck, but War of the Spark did add in another really good two drop for us with Dreadhorde Invasion. You know, we, did, we were kind of struggling on the two mana slot with basically only having Graveyard Marshal as like a, a solid two drop that we wanted to play. And now we get Dreadhorde Invasion also. Dreadhorde Invasion may not be the best against like the other aggro decks uh, with like the lose life every turn. But to be honest, our deck's not really the best against the other aggro decks because we're a little slower and cards like Chain Whirler and stuff are really hard to deal with. But against control decks, Dreadhorde Invasion is awesome. You can just sit out there, keep making uh, larger zombies, you know, over time. It's something that uh, we can attack in with like the bigger zombie also whenever we give it death touch so like getting like the, like the dreadhorde invasion that like gains death touch every single turn is like a is a really nice um combination too so we got that going and the other card that we have that's new is here uh new here is angrath captain of chaos i think this card's a little underrated creatures you control have menace is a pretty big keyword like that can that can get in a lot of damage uh, especially if we get to just you know play some one drops um hopefully get in for get in some damage uh with those maybe have like a death baron that like the opponents don't really want to block the creature because of the death baron and then suddenly we slam this angrath and like they're about to like make some blocks and they're like oh no now all your creatures have menace and now i can't block all your creatures plus menace with death baron is a great combination so if your creatures have death touch then they have to block them with two creatures so you get to kill two creatures and of course angrath can amass as well so it helps us get towards like the lifelink part of dreadhorde invasion or you know just make a 2-2 so that's pretty cool uh <clears throat> to make room from our previous deck for those cards we used to play four stitcher supplier and four creeping chills um we have a couple more removal spells we didn't have as much removal so now we have like more removal and dreadhorde invasions and angraths and i think dreadhorde invasion and angrath is going to be some upgrades over stitcher supplier and creeping chill that we had before um all right cabal stronghold is not a card we want at all in this deck that's a we're talking i was i was i described this before but um we had some more questions about it. this is like a really common question of like why are you not playing cabal stronghold you're just playing swamps don't you want this card but if you look at it all right so it it's a colorless land it adds colorless mana that's a huge problem you don't want to be you don't want your first land drop to be colorless of course with your one drops you don't want your second one to be colorless because graveyard marshal or after you attack maybe you want another one drop plus a drill bit you really don't want your second one colorless and even sometimes the third land drop um if that's colorless sometimes you have like you want to go graveyard marshal plus diagraph ghoul you know you want to double spell there or graveyard marshal plus drill bit on the third turn the colorless mana is a, is a real downside so it has to be really good if you want to put a colorless land in your deck and it says you pay three and you tap and you add a black for each swamp you control so in order for like okay let's say you have three swamps if you pay your th if you tap your three swamps and tap this you'll add three mana so it doesn't it doesn't help there if you have four swamps then it will add four mana and you're tapping four lands because you're three in that so it's it's even on four swamps once you have five swamps then it will start adding some mana but you have to have five swamps in play we have 22 lands so having five swamps plus having one of these strongholds in play that's having six lands in play out of our 22 that's just something that we're not really trying to do the only thing that we can even use that mana for at all is the liliana minus three if we had like a you know six lands in play seven lands in play and we have liliana in play and we minus three then cabal stronghold could do something but that's just those amount of games that that happens compared to the amount of games that this is going to be one of like your your two lands in your two land hand when you're only playing 22 lands and one of them is this cabal stronghold that's just horrendous it's not worth it whatsoever so do not like cabal stronghold in this deck there are too many times like i've played this deck a ton there's too many times like where it just like you lose games because of this card because of it being the colorless land and you're not able to cast your spells if i think cabal, cabal stronghold's good in a, in a in a deck that's mono black and you're trying to get to more mana but when you're only playing 22 i don't like it when you start playing like 23 24 lands then i like i like like one cabal stronghold in like a 23 24 land deck 
um, but not not with 22. Uh, sideboard wise, we could add more mana for fina finale of eternity, but the finale of eternity here, we're bringing it in against small creature decks. We're not really bringing this in against big creature decks. Like the the point of finale of eternity here is to to clean up like um, mono whites, like the history of Benalia and and like the small creatures and stuff like that. It's just not it's not um, going to happen too often. Where we just get that much mana and Cabal Stronghold does stuff. All right, we got two. Price of Betrayal also in our sideboard for just killing Teferis, basically. You know, like killing uh, the Planeswalkers from Esper Control. That's basically like the only time we're bringing in Price of Betrayal, but I think it, it could be worth it. I could certainly see not having Price of Betrayal in the sideboard. This is kind of like a test for this card, seeing if we want this as like a way to just get rid of a, a Planeswalker for very cheap, you know, only one mana here. Hey, QQ, good evening. Um... We have our, our duresses, of course. We got Walk the Planks for some more removal. One thing that we're going to think about while we're playing this league is whether we want a split of, like, Cast Down and Walk the Plank in the main deck. That's something that I could see for sure, especially with, like, Oketras running around and everything. Maybe we want some kind of split there. Uh, we got Davriel as, like, our, another threat against Control to keep their hand down. So as you can tell, as you can tell against Control, the plan is, like, Drill Bit, Duress, Davriel, you know, shut them off of cards in hand and have like the one drops and the two drops and like kind of go aggro, try to go underneath them and get rid of the cards in hand. And then Finale of Eternity, this is for Mono Red, Mono White. Um, those are, Mono Red and Mono White are two matches that are kind, are pretty tough for our deck. And before we'd have to play like Ritual of Soot to try to, or like Golden Demise, Ritual of Soot, something to try to kill like their creatures. They're just a lot faster than, the, than us on the ground. Um, those are matchups we don't really want to face. <clears throat> War of the Spark does give us this new tool that we don't have to kill our own creatures. And hopefully for four mana, we can, you know, kill a couple of creatures. It's basically like a four mana, one-sided golden demise, if you think about it like that. Um, hopefully it works out. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of see. Um, but those are like the matchups we don't really want to face too much. We really want to be facing more like the slower control decks. Slower control decks, we get all this this discard and like the the aggro, and that's what we can get. All right, so it's mono black zombie time. Let's give it a try. Yeah, we could have Elder Spell. Elder Spell is certainly... Yeah, that, that could be an option instead of Price of Betrayal. Um, that we could clear out multiple for two mana. I was just thinking like the one mana, you know, trying to get... Trying to be really efficient. The difference between one and two mana is huge. Look at this hand. Think if we had Cabal Stronghold in this hand, we'd like have to mulligan it. Or maybe not have to mulligan it, but it'd be really bad. But here we can play our Graveyard Marshal. Uh, did we get a did we get a tenth sub that I didn't write down? Or did I miss a subscriber? Do I want a dreadhorde invasion? So breeding pool can mean some different decks. If this is like Nexus, I want the graveyard marshal in play right now. If it's if it's like Bant, I'd still want Graveyard Marshal. All right, so yeah, we're just playing Graveyard Marshal. Sultai. Hmm. Sultai's a problem. Wild Growth Walker is a problem. Yeah, I guess we're just barren swinging. Hopefully no explore creatures. You can tell we're hitting really hard. Hopefully no explore creatures. 
Okay, good sign. No, bad sign. Really? All right, draw cast down. Cast down. Tilt. Love that block. Love that block. Woo! They don't know Death Baron. Oh man. We were so dead. Or dead ish. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Mur yeah, Murph was a knight. Sometimes they double count people, and earlier they double counted somebody. So that's, yeah, so it said it was 10, but okay. Could double Dreadhorde Invasion or Drill Bit and Reaper. I think we would just want to Drill Bit because we're just trying to end this game really quickly. All right, so they have Contempt. Liliana's really annoying. Um, I'll just take the Liliana, maybe. I could take, take the Jade Light and... Then they can tempt Baron, and they take three, six, seven, eight. We don't kill them. And then Liliana doesn't save them. So, yeah, it's, it's actually just Jade Light. Yeah, it's the Liliana for the next turn. They, they wouldn't be able to Liliana this turn. But they if they can tempt Death Baron, which they should, because that's five... Then we attack them for eight down to three. And then if they have Liliana the next turn. Oh gosh. Be great. You know, Liliana would sack two creatures, we'd still have the three. But get rid of that. Dreadhorde. That's game. All right. Good thing our opponent blocked with their Wildgrowth Walker. Well, P Price of Betrayal could remove counters from a Hydroid Crisis. So this is one mana kill a Hydroid Crisis. Or, like, they block with a Wildgrowth Walker because they think the Wildgrowth Walker is really big. And then after combat, then we Price of Betrayal and remove the counters from the Wildgrowth Walker. Those are things we could do. I don't think I'm going to play it, but I was just saying some cool things that it could do. Definitely want to walk the planks. Dreadhorde Invasions. That's got to be... Is that too slow? Seems like it's going to be too slow. Hmm. Maybe I do want Price of Betrayal. Nah. I just don't... I don't know if this is actually going to kill things. In this matchup. Alright, uh, Reaper... I, yeah, I'm not taking out Reaper. Reaper is good. I could play two Duress. They have, like, some good spells. Maybe just do this. Davriel's against control. All right, wizard. Take care. What does Spark Harvest do exactly again? Oh, is that the, that's the one where you sacrifice a creature and then kill something? Yeah, I don't want to sacrifice my creatures. I like my zombies. Because new Liliana costs six mana and we have twenty-two lands. We can't we can't cast new Liliana. So we don't have any. This is the best card in our deck, by quite a ways, but 
We just gotta ship that though. Question is, how do you decide to put in one or two or four duress? So against control, I want all four duress. Here, um, I basically have like two slots open that I didn't really love any cards in the deck or like it, like in the sideboard. Like, you know, we had fi I had 58 that I was like willing to play, but there's like another two that I didn't really want too much. But we got to play them. And I should be killing that incubation druid. The problem is, ooh. If I kill, if I would have killed the incubation druid, and then they draw a land for Lanowar Elf, or sorry, a land for Jade Light Ranger. There we go. There's the land. Oh no, another one of those. Um. Hmm. So I had like two slots open and well, the duresses just kind of filled those slots pretty pretty well. Alright, good news they don't have Jade Light Ranger, that's good news. I've <laughs> Wait till you see what I've got planned for you. Hmm. I'm done here. Finale of Eternity and Find Finality. Some ways to make big mana in mono blue treasure map. Hmm. Treasure map, uh, and then uh, Orozka Relic. No. No. Soulfly is pretty tough. Yeah, Gilded Lotus, that's a good one. Sultai is pretty tough, as you can tell from this game. I'm not just feared, I'm respected. Yeah, uh, for Chewy, um, you just you, all you have to do is go through the link, and I believe I just get credit for new uh, new purchases through the link. I believe there's no coupon code to use.
No, it's sorcery. This is sorcery. Yeah, Death Baron's a pretty important card for us to have. All right, on the play... I mean, do I want this card? Maybe we can use that card. They have Incubation Druid. They have so many spells. I kind of just want all these duresses. I'm going I'm going with the same thing we just had. I'm going with the same same thing we just had. I feel like invasion is going to be too slow. Could be wrong there. Yeah, Death Baron's a really nice card for us to have with the Death Touch for sure. I really hope we draw a 3-drop. I hope we draw something to play this next turn. That's a killer. Can't take this turn off also. No, we're not the control deck in this matchup, no. Which is a problem, because they're very good against aggro here. So they want to block Gutter Bones, they got to block with both, so we can trade Gutter Bones for Incubation Druid. That's a trade I'm willing to make. <clears throat> Please no Explore Creature. Ah, I'll have you in chains next time. Why don't I attack with a 2-2 also? Alright, I can't even pick that up. What am I doing? Should attack with a 2-2 also. I don't know why I was thinking that the Wild Growth Walker could block the 2-2, and I didn't want the 2-2 to die because uh, it's only non-token. <laughs> yeah, we did really well yesterday. Um, we we may have our some O2 records here with this deck. Wow. You can kneel if you like. Well, they aren't useful to me alive. They have so many cards, it's just too difficult for us to deal with with Wild Growth Walker, Hostage Taker, and Hydroid Crisis. All those cards are like cards I can't beat. A lot of those. And this deck 
that our opponent's playing in particular definitely looks to be tuned towards beating aggro with like their black finale and these moment of cravings and all this stuff. But I could have I could have played this game a little better, but at the end of the day I'm drawing eight lands, I'm not being this Hydro Crisis. See if we find one of our five removal spells left in our deck. Hey, we did. Okay, so that's going to cost two mana. Yeah, I'm ticking up again. Yeah. I value moral flexibility. Cool. Tick up, draw gutter bones. Haven't seen a Death Baron yet, right? Yeah. No, no Death Baron. <clears throat> two losses. Yeah, we're playing. We're playing the decks till we win five or lose two. That's what we're doing. It's no big deal there. We can get those all those things back. Ugh. Worse. We actually have, like, with us having eight lands, I don't have the black finale in my deck, but the black finale would be great here. <laughs> Nine lands. Ugh. Open the graves. All right, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, thanks, Balling Yeti. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah, the with Chewy, you yeah you, you get thirty percent off when you set up your auto auto order. You can cancel that auto order at any time. So if you want, like after you place your order, you can cancel your order, your auto order. Yeah, we did. Ugh, this was boring anyway. We're drawing half of our lands here. Ten of our twenty two, at least. Wow. Um, I've been enjoying Bant Midrange, the Explorer variant, a lot, and I feel like it has a really good win rate against both aggro and control, but I consistently lose to Reclamation Nexus. What do you suggest as a sideboard strategy against them? Already run a Mini Teferi, Deputy, and Veto. Um, what it, do you not have Knight of Autumn in there? <clears throat> um, but yeah, as long as you, if you have those, that, that sounds pretty good. Um, you could play Narset also. But yeah, you want to definitely need to be able to destroy the enchantments. Uh, so you said you have Deputy. That seems like you have a lot. If you already have Dovin's Veto and Mini Teferi. Um, but then yeah, maybe more maybe more Knight of Autumn. I mean that helps you against red also. Yeah, 
Man, you'd think that we'd have a ton of lands in this deck. Alright, well, as I talked about, whenever we entered, Mono Red's pretty tough for us. Mono Red and Soul Tide, these are... You know, we want to be playing the blue-black decks. We want to be playing the Thought Erasure decks. That's... That's where we do good. These these decks, these are just... Looks like this may be an OT. Like, these are really tough matchups for us. We're too slow. That's not a good card to see. Hmm. So I need these. Like, that's the reason why we have these Finale of e Eternities. So we're going to try that. Don't want this card. I don't love Midnight Reaper, but it's possible we just kind of need it. I'd rather have Duress over Drill Bit, because actually dealing damage to my opponent's not reliable. I want the Duress right away. Let's do that. Yeah, some people just like playing mono red. Some people, um, some people like the deck. Nothing wrong with that. This looks like they definitely want to turn on light up the stage. I'm going to try to keep them from, from doing that. They could, of course, just have Steamkin here and not, not have been going towards light up the stage. That's what it really felt like was light up the stage. Midnight Reapers are going to be dying. I want them to die early. So we get the extra card. The earlier we get the extra card, the better. Bleh. That thing's a real pain. They did have the light up the stage. Called it. Which one of you would I rather have Lava Coiled? I guess you. J 
Chain Wheeler is a real problem, though. What? No attack with Chain Whirler? They just don't want me to... They don't want me to, like, attack back? Huh. Yeah, Chewy is a pet supply company. Where you can get all your cat food, dog food, all that kind of stuff. Draw a land, please. Ugh. Let's just draw a land or two. Like, I have six lands. I have seven lands. Can't you have like four? Gross. All right, quick O2 with mono black zombies. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, that, that was really quick. Um, let's... I have another really similar deck that I think is better, but people have been like... Um, people like the zombies, but I think that like a, a similar deck, but one that I think is better is this mono black aggro. Maybe we should just kind of move over and try this, because that, that didn't take too long. We can... We can, we can Slip another deck in here. <laughs> Twenty-two lands is not way too many. I mean, we we have to like we want to hit our fourth land drop for the Lilianas, but yeah, we just kept drawing lands and lands and lands. I mean, that's just those are just like those kind of those kind of games. We just played two games where our twenty-two land deck drew seven lands in one game, ten lands in another, or eleven lands in the other. All right, let's see let's see how this fares. A very similar deck, but focusing on Dreadshade. That's the focus of this deck, is Dreadshade here. Um, so this gives us something to do with our extra mana, and it's also just, it's really big. It's, um, you know, just a, a really good attacker and everything. So let's try Mono Black Aggro. So I'm gonna, let's go ahead and add this over here. And I'll just kind of have... Both of these in the same YouTube video because it's so short. Um, but yeah, basically the same kind of deck. As you can see, we're just not focused on the zombie theme. Um, so that's why we don't have like the Liliana Planeswalker. And we got Spawn of Mayhem and Dreadshade instead. And then we got Chupacabra at the top end to be able to destroy some things. Seeker Squire to help smooth our draws a little bit. But a very similar deck. Not you. You. So bonus deck time. Looking for this deck list. I think I'm pretty sure this deck list is on stream decker. Let me go look for it and update the deck list command while we get started. Oh, I guess it's not. All right, well, after this match, then I'll have to update that. Hey, Storm, welcome back. Ugh. Yeah, I think, I think this is a better deck of the... Same kind of thing. I think Dreadshade's better than the what the zombies bring to the table. It's 
skydiver. Zagana's pretty big. Does not die to cast down. Pretty sure Zagana's a merfolk anyway, so yeah, wouldn't die to walk the plank either. Just can't kill it. Alright, we'll get the dredge hate in play. No attacks. All right, well, looks like we're going to have to kill that flyer. It has trample. No, it has trample after it adapts. Hydroid Praesis. Nothing's big. Zagana's gonna kill me. Hey, guys, enough. So then that's five, six trampling over. I was just basically hoping they wouldn't do what they just did there and just hoping they didn't adapt to the Zagana and attack. Or if they did, they didn't have another creature to play. You know, like the, that, like maybe they didn't have like land creature and it would have tapped him out kind of thing. Maybe I could have swung back. Zagana's a huge problem. I can't kill Zagana at all. Walk the blank cast down. Neither of those kills Zagana. This Dreadhorde Invasion card, we just keep on playing against these creature decks. Does not ver look very impressive. Maybe that card's not good. I don't think we need the discard in this matchup. Doesn't seem like it too much. Have you ever built a deck based around getting emblems onto the field fast? Three. Not really. Not like as like the the core of the deck trying to get emblems. Not that I can think of. 
Dread Horde Invasion is good against non-creature decks. And that's kind of what our... These mono black aggros are like... They're really built to beat non-creature decks. Like if you have a whole lot of like... Um, if you have like a whole lot of control and like Nexus at your like local shop, like a lot of people don't don't play very many creatures and this could be a decent option. This game looks pretty good for us with all these dread shades. Actually, it's basically unblockable. Card's very strong. What's up, Chaos? Alright, so we're going to trade it for the, the Benthic Biomancer and the Skydiver so I can play the other Dreadshade. That is sub number 10 on the day. Got to that first sub goal. We'll be cracking a pack after this. All right, so both dread shades need to be blocked. Unless, unless they block the squire. Which they block the squire, so... Okay, just let the th yeah, I guess them taking three or them taking more isn't much different. Hydroid Crisis, though? I don't need to play that Squire. Why don't I play modern anymore? I just like arena. I like I like playing standard and I like playing arena. I like how standard is mostly like mid rangey type stuff, and I think just standards are really enjoyable to play. It's lots of different things to do, and no, same th same thing. <laughs> yeah, doubling Stevens is awesome. Yeah. Um. I don't know, modern's just pretty degenerate. Do I like commander? Yeah, I like commander. Yeah. Um, I don't have my own commander deck. I play uh, with my friends back in Texas and everything when I go there. They all have a lot of commander decks, and it's always a great time. Modern's a lot of, like, what is your... You just compare the two opening hands, whoever has the better one wins, and then and then who finds the sideboard cards after sideboarding. There's not as much play to it. 
the decks are just so powerful. Um, I'm not going to cast down an Arboreal Grazer, am I? No, I'm not. I'll just pass the turn. They have Frilled Mystic over there. Nope. Nice Rage Harder. That's where I'm from. Together, we the DFW will area. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Hmm. How are we going to get out of this? Hey, Narinen, welcome back. Thanks for that resub there. I haven't seen the remake trailer. No, I haven't. Hey, Trunks Iron. Good evening. All right, it says eight months and you still haven't picked a name for the stream baby. The, the stream baby. You. All right, here's Krasis. Ugh. Must be nice. All right, sub number 11 on the day. This is a lot easier whenever we drew Dreadshade. <laughs> Not having Dreadshade makes this a lot harder. But Nissa Hydroid Crisis is a great combination. Let us talk it's a great, peace. great combo. I have another Crisis. Please no. It's kind of like our Simic Proliferate deck we're going to have later on. More than 8,000 people have named their child Aria in 2019 so far. Behold, makes us true power. That's not too surprising. It's a good, good name. All right, let's see if we find all all these things are going to die. Uh, so we're drawing four. Never mind. I thought they were going to have our, our burial grazer. Okay, yeah, never mind. The grazer. Let's counter there. All right, let's see if we find Finale of Eternity. That's what we need. We get six draws. Finale... Okay, there's a finale. I should help out mana wise a little bit. Elemental 
All right, Trunks. Give me some time today. Um, it was just one of those days I didn't get much sleep at all last night. It was just like one of those days like where you can't really fall asleep, you know, kind of thing. And so I didn't, I didn't really put together any brand new decks for today. But yeah, we'll, I'll get a Tezzeret deck here. Coming soon. Nope. All right, you got me, Nissa. I was feeling good about that one in that game three until, you know, that Nissa. And then I was like, okay, well, we could still beat the Nissa. And then they had Krasis. And then I was like, ugh, not so sure now. Because then obviously Krasis found a bunch of other stuff. The Boreal Grazer honestly did a ton for them. Look for Dreadshade. Our deck's a lot better when we have Dreadshade than when it's not. Than when, than when we don't. This Grixis control? We could beat Grixis. Maybe not with this hand. But overall, we could be Grixis. May they play a Thieva Sanity here. We get to cast down it. Alright, I like our I like our chances here. Just in the match. This is what we'd rather be playing against than uh, creature decks. Of course I'm saying that with holding a cast down and a chupacabra in my hand. But they could play a bolus. Oh no, ritual set. Well we'll draw two. So you're thinking of cutting land worlds for Grazer in Simic. You're talking about like Simic midrange? And no, I, I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's really good against people that just randomly play Gutter Bones. And then you also have Nyssa and then Krasis afterwards. So you have like, you, know, you have like a reward for like that little bit of mana and you don't just like run out of cards. You have like the Krasis that refills your hand completely. But no, I don't think it's better than Land World. Hey, T Brock. Okay, not bad. Um, yeah, we're not being these cards. Yeah, I, I can't beat Nicol Bolas, Ugin, and Liliana. <clears throat> I can't beat all these cards. Now with a bunch of Chupacabras. All right, sideboard time. <clears throat> <laughs> a 
Let's bring in all these discard spells and Davriels and take out the cast downs and Hmm. I do have a lot of things that cost three now. You know, hopefully the drill bits don't necessarily cost three. Am I just going to take out Choop? Yeah, we could take out Choop. What are my other two cards? Seeker Squire. Sure, I'll cut two squires. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a match we would actually want to draw a Dreadhorde Invasion. There we go. Pretty good little hand here. Yeah, I'm going to just take the Discovery. Discovery, you know, looks like that, like, Discovery is going to really hold their hand together. They can Thought Erasure away whatever here. You know, it's, they can take any one of these, but Discovery should be able to, like, dig them really quickly for, like, a Ritual of Soot, for example. All right, they kept that card on hand, on top. The great part about Spawn of Mayhem is it costs three mana, but it doesn't actually die to Ritual of Soot. Might as well play another Squire here, because I'm not scared of Ritual of Soot, because if they play Soot, they die to Spawn of Mayhem. Or I need, like, something. I don't think that's it. But they do have Nicol Bolas the Ravager in their deck. I wasn't sure if they actually would with how many uh, big Planeswalkers we saw last time. We know they have Nicol Bolas the Ravager. So do I need a little bit of removal? Like, walk the plank instead of Squire. Or Choop instead of Squire. Nah. Nah. Like want to keep if you know we know we have like another land or two on top, but we just can't. <laughs> no, I should have kept. Looks like I'm not going to be dressing for a little while because I really want to play the Dreadhorde invasion this next turn. And I think it's better to have the Diagraph Ghoul out in play turn one than, you know, playing turn turn one duress. Gotta get ahead. Hmm.
All right, what we got going on over here? The Devil and Nicol Bolas. Well, one of those seems a lot more powerful than the other. Which I play this weekend at SCG Open in Syracuse, Bant or Sultai? Um, good question. I don't know, maybe, maybe Bant. Little Teferi is just so good. Hey, what's up, Misfit? Happy Monday. The thing that I like more about Bant than Sultai is the aggro matchup. Or like basically, Sultai it's kind of hard to have it built to beat. Like you, you can like Sultai. If you like want to build your best mid range deck against other mid range decks, Sultai will beat Bant. You can you can beat you can build Sultai to beat Bant. You can you can build Sultai to beat Control. You can build Sultai to beat aggro, but having Sultai beat all of those at the same time is, is kind of tough. And I think Bant can do a better job at defeating um, aggro while still be focused on like other mid-range decks. I guess so, so I could attack for 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I could put them down to 1 or kill Bolas and kill Bolas. So I could attack them for 7. I have other schemes to attend to. But I think just like lim limiting them to these two cards and not letting them just continue to draw more cards and exile my permanents. It's the way to go. I like it. Yeah. Because they just have to chump block with because the dread shade's so big, so they just have to chump block. Yeah, if I would have killed the Dreadhorde invasion, I would have had lethal there with the land drop. But of course, you know, we didn't know we we're drawing a land. But I don't think it's worth getting rid of the invasion for that. Like we're already looking really good. That could be like a way that we do lose if we get rid of Dreadhorde invasion, and you know, we don't draw a land, so we don't have lethal, and then they draw a Ritual of Soot and kill all my creatures, and then I have nothing. Ugh. Let's try this. On the draw with a scry. Yeah. Let's see what triple invasion's like. And if it's good. They're just going to play, like, Deputy Detention and, like, get rid of my token and get rid of all my Dreadhorde invasions. Let's see if you're worthy. Starting over is the only way. I gotta cast these drill bits. I can't beat that card. And I can't really beat the other card either. It's a loaded hand. <laughs> I've seen puppies whine less than you.
Hopefully it's just Krasis and nothing better to flash in here. Because Krasis just trades. <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. You fight like a city brat. You're welcome, Terramorphous. Yeah, glad I could help. So mono black aggro and like the mono black uh, zombies both didn't gain like a ton from War of the Spark, but the format overall gained a lot. Like the the format overall Have is just a lot better, especially with these three mana planeswalkers and everything. So I'm not sure that that these decks have the power level to compete as much anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're already tired of New Teferi? No, and we have a year plus with that card. At least it's not a false set card where you have two years with it. Um, we'll have like 17-ish months with that card in standard. And we're like one month in. <laughs> We tried with our two mana. Ketra's gonna be really hard to beat. Hmm. So I need all of you. This card's so bad against Deputy of Detention. We just saw that game. We had a bunch of them. It was just really slow. Uh. There's one rotation a year, T-Dub. And four sets rotate out in the fall each time. So these sets for this year will rotate out next year. Well, this is maybe my best card, the Dreadshade. So I'll keep it. The drill bit's pretty awkward, but... Oh, well. <laughs> That's what we want to face is Esper Control with this deck. Ugh. Yeah, I was honestly really surprised that they printed that many Teferi cards. With Big Teferi already being like the best Planeswalker, and they just gave Blue White like another amazing Planeswalker like that. Like, why don't they give like, you know, like a uh, red, black a good Planeswalker? 
Like they got, they just got like the little Angrath. That's it. Like this is just the new Reflector Mage. It's just, it's just better Reflector Mage. Re Reflector Mage got banned in standard. Teferi's just a much better card. Yeah, drawing a card on the minus three is pretty dumb. Pretty dumb. I've got it. <laughs> and then, yeah, never thought of it like that. Yeah, it is. It has a whole lot better reflector I mage. Gotta get that fairy out of there before it starts bouncing everything. Jeez. All right, so mono black aggro didn't fare too much better than. Uh, um, mono black zombies. I do think this is a better deck though, but those creature decks that we have in standard right now, like that Bant deck is really strong. Uh, Sultai, same thing. Like Sultai and Bant are both really strong and they just eat up this deck alive. This kind of deck is, I, I do like this deck against uh, Control and against Nexus. I like it against both of those decks. But the other mid-range creature decks are just on a different level than the mono-black aggro decks, unfortunately. Um, and also, like, the other aggro matchups, the other aggro decks are just are pretty good against this, too. So this is really the kind of deck, like, both the mono-black zombies and the mono-black aggro, like, these are decks that you play to beat non-creature decks. But it's just going to struggle really bad against the creature decks. Um, yeah, Chris, please do. So there we go. Uh, I got, kind of got two decks in there cause, uh, you know, didn't do so well with them. So we got to do two quick decks. Dreadhorde Invasion was really, really disappointing in these two leagues. Both of them really disappointing. The card wasn't very strong. Dreadshade was definitely like our best card in, in this deck. Um, that's what this... You know, we've seen with this cycle, you know how good Tempest Gin, Goblin Chain Whirler, Benelish Marshall, even Steel Leaf Champion, all those cards are really good. Dreadshade just hasn't really seen as much play. And Dreadshade, I think, is really strong, and it was one of our best cards. The problem that Dreadshade has had in Standard is that it hasn't had enough around it. All the other cards have good things around it, you know, to make, to fill out a whole deck. Like this deck, for example, the two drops that you can play in black all aren't good uh the removal that you have is nowhere near as good as like like the removal in mono red is just a bunch of burn spells that you can use in any matchup against control um you can use burn spells you just throw them upstairs against aggro you use the burn spells to kill creatures like burn spells are awesome they're so versatile in mono blue with tempest Gen, the removal they have is uh, counter magic, which counter magic is just good against everybody. You know, you play Wizards of Tord against everybody. It's great. Um, you know, you, you get a fast clock and you start countering things. You're good. 
and mono black here and then like mono white has like conclave tribunal for like some removal but it's also just so fast mono white is just a blistering fast deck that it's it's okay that even if they don't have like the best interaction but conclave tribunal good against everybody everybody plays permanence <clears throat> mono black isn't blistering fast it doesn't have versatile removal it's just got has like some some cast downs or walk the planks or brass's contempts or whatever but that's still like brass's contempt costs a lot conclave tribunal you can convoke and make it not cost very much um and then like our, our creatures aren't like amazing like you know we don't really have good two drops our one drops are okay so we don't have very good interaction we don't have very good two drops and for an aggro deck we don't have like good card advantage we don't have card advantage at all you know you think about the card advantage the mono red has the card advantage the mono blue has we, we don't have card advantage so a lot of people try to put all this blame on dreadshade and say that dreadshade's not very good but dreadshade is awesome as just an individual card the problem is is what dreadshade has around it um and basically to to play mono black you do need like what mono black does um excel in is yeah they do have cabal stronghold um and like there's good like sweeper effects and good like big mana effects as you can kind of think about like the chromatic black deck you know like there's there's a lot of reasons to play like bigger black decks but like dreadshade and aggro just not not so good you need to like go big and um you know use all like the mana that like cabal stronghold can add and use the really big effects that you have like the six mana liliana and that kind of stuff but we tried it out uh tried out zombies and aggro we had some success with these decks before war of the spark but post war of the spark the format's gotten a lot better especially with like the mid-range decks and uh this deck did not gain very much but there we go all right uh if you were watching this video later on on youtube hope you enjoyed it hope you learned some stuff and thanks for watching and i will see you for another video thanks joy thanks for that donation there all right i'll write you down for a donation deck last deck saturday got a new deck sweet all right but anyway if you're watching on youtube thank you so much for watching hope you enjoy it and i will check you out for another video